Welcome to Money Congos, where we discuss personal finance and investment tips. We are committed to helping people create wealth and achieve financial freedom. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Alright then, let's head into today's conversation. Hi Adam, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. I'm good. Yourself? I'm great. Great. Yeah, great, 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 great. Good to hear. The sun is still shining over here. <laughs> anyway, how about you? How's your week gone so far? Um, it's been good. A bit tiring. I've I was a bit under the the weather, should I say? Uh, but oh, slow. Uh, but you're better now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just taking my medications, that's all. I'm, I'll be fine. Oh, okay, good, good, good. You say you don't go marry, make somebody nurse you back to health, so... You know, see. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. I see. Hello, Elvis, how you doing? I do, I do, boss. How you doing? I'm great, sorry, I'm great. Uh, David, how you also doing? I'm good. Yes, though. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna join shortly. I have a okay. meeting. Real quick. I'll be back. Okay. Sure. 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 So today we have a special guest with us here. All this is a mate from school. Someone I look up to. Very, very wise man. Very wise man. So, um, Elvis, could you, uh, could you just tell us a little about yourself, what you've been up to, and then I'll bring you home with how, why. Uh, you are so relevant for this conversation that we're going to have. Thank you, Elie Charlie, this introduction there, Charlie, some days. Uh, <laughs> can I, can, is this a, a, a pigeon-friendly place? Or oh, yeah, yeah, pigeon-friendly, Charlie, feel free. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, like Elie Kem said, um, we've been, uh, we were mates back in, uh, back in high school. Um, what I do is, um, I'm in sales, I'm in sales compensation. Um, currently, uh, I'm a consultant in sales compensation. Basically, what that is is um, I design uh, sales compensation plans for for companies um, based on what they want, what they are looking for, their industry, and how they want to compensate their sales people for uh, for job that is that is done. Um, I'm in. I'm currently in Atlanta. Um, I've been here for for over um, over ten years now, and all my career has been in in sales compensation. Uh, currently, I'm I'm going solo right now and looking to do um, just work on a few things other than sales compensation. So that is my that is the background. Nice, nice. Thank you, Elvis, for sharing that. Um, and Elvis has experience in the U.S. And I, I heard him speaking in a certain conversation some time back, and it got me thinking. You know, he knows a lot of people who have been abroad, and been uh, and and gone through the education system in Ghana. So he could share some experience uh, on this topic. And the talk, the topic is funding higher education. It's not only abroad. Granted, it's both in both in Ghana and abroad, you know. So we want to have multiple uh, experiences. Speaking of another person who has uh, been to school abroad, uh, I did not I did not tell Mimi this, but is, I think as we were talking, Mimi was settling the thing. She now she knew that you no, know, we need Daniel up here to discuss with us. So Daniel, I, I hope you are willing and able to join in on the conversation. Oh, if I it's a holiday, yeah, you said you're holidaying, so great. <laughs> Hi, Daniel, how you doing? Why would you put me on the spot like this? Please forgive me. <laughs> Why? Oh. Daniel, um, because you are, you are ever ready. Not all the time. Anyway, <laughs> hi everybody. So wait, when we talk about higher education, well, yeah. Daniel, perhaps you could just give us, you know, we, we we know you, but if you could just give us some background about your time in the US, why you went abroad and why you thought it was worth it. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Uh, well, I'm Daniel. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what else I should say. Um, Where did you do I, your undergrad? 
Uh huh. Okay. Let me let me put it that way. Okay. Yeah. So I'm Daniel. I did undergrad at Stevenson University in Maryland, and then I did my MBA at La Salle University in Pennsylvania. Um. So for undergrad, I um. How do I put it? In in terms of like the funding, what the, the actual topic is, I had. Oh, oh, Daniel, don't, don't worry about that. We'll get into those specifics in a bit. Uh, but oh, yeah, okay. you're giving us yeah, just cases. overview. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, so that people okay. understand why you are here with us. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, so you, that, that's what I did. Yeah. Good, good. You know that so you're not the only person I'm going to... Perhaps I should mention that I did one year at La Salle where I did my MBA first. Then I transferred... To Stevenson to finish the rest. Then I went back to Asal to do my MV. Let me put it that way. I think that makes the story a little bit. Oh really? I, I did not know there were these caves and bends in your story. You've been uh, keeping some things for me. I no, you well, 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 well. Maybe I have. Maybe I have it. Wow. But yeah, I did one year transfer schools, finished somewhere, and then went back to where I started to do my MV. So yeah okay that's great that's great and uh you know daniel is not the only person i'm going to be putting on the spot today mimi doesn't you know that i'm going to put it on the spot mimi has also funded higher education in ghana so mimi can you please tell us about your education experiences okay um so i went to um webster university here in ghana and um, it's an american university and um, I think initially the plan was to start here and go outside um, and complete or do something like that. But I mean, I had too many obligations um, and uh, I also had a job. So, and I think my resources were also quite limited. It was great enough that I could pay all that money and dollars when I earned in CD. So I stayed in Ghana and I graduated. Um, how did I? I want to put so high I funded it. No, right? Not yet. Not okay, yet. Sure. Okay. okay, great, great. Okay, so to anyone who just joined in the conversation, thank you for joining in. Today we are having a conversation about funding higher education. This higher education could be undergrad for you, it could be a master's degree, it could be a PhD. In fact, where is, where is, um, Paulina, when we need a PhD in here. <laughs> yeah, so um, it could be any level, right? And we have people here having a, a conversation about it. I didn't check with Adam before, but Adam, have, do you have a master's? Adam? Okay, I'll circle back to Adam in a bit, right? And perhaps I'm starting... Yeah, have, I have Sorry. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Okay, I oh, one. great. Oh, great. Please tell us about it. What did you do? Where did you do it? Okay, so... Yeah, um, it's an MBA. I did it with um, the Australian Institute of Business through the Ghana campus with the Accra Business School. Yeah, so that's how I did my MBA. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Interesting. Interesting. So you people, you like Abruzzi schools. Why are you like that? So for me, I just... I just started from uh, University of Legon, University of Okonglu, so that's that's the experience I have. And then, uh, well, by God's grace, I've come to, I've come here to come and do the MBA in Cornell University, a whole different experience. But um, not not for it to be lost on anyone. We are talking about higher education, which includes undergrad and postgraduate studies. But it, I, I realized that there's this trend in Ghana where Usually, undergrad, we don't think so much about funding in Ghana because our parents take care of it, you know. (laughs) So we never really have to uh, think through uh, undergrad funding. That's why it's perhaps it may seem like this conversation is going to start from a master's level, but the lessons to be picked up would apply to any of them, uh, to any level of higher education that you want to pursue. Or is anyone here on, on stage who has a different experience where they funded their own undergrad? Hey, Charlie, that be some... Oh, Adam. Oh, no, I, did, I didn't fund my own undergrad, but I think I have uh, helped... You know, I do a lot of um, youth coaching too. So I have 
had to help a number of people in my church, like streamline how they could raise who who didn't have that much of a fortunate background so they can go through their undergrad um, education by funding themselves here. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. So more experience from there. Elikan, when you say funding it yourself, is it are you uh, do you mean out of pocket or does that include loans and all of that? That includes loans too. That includes loans too because all, if you take it, it does. Oh, okay, okay. Then do, do you fall in that bracket? Yes, yes. I would say most nice. of the people I know in the United States fall in that bracket. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then, okay. All right. So speaking of funding, right? Let us let me ask this first question about education. What's your take on education as an investment? Do you consider education as an investment? Elvis, let's start with you. Um, okay, I, I, think this is, I think this is the best part where I come in after this. I, I don't know if I'm much needed in, in, in this conversation. And um, you understand why in a minute, uh, for those who do not know me. Um, I came here to to go to school, obviously, and then start a career. But two years in, I dropped out of college. Um, I decided I did not want to do it anymore. I wanted to take another path, um, and also the loan started started to pile up. Um, this may seem that I'm contrary to what the conversation is going on here, but I am I am ne- neither here to uh, uh, bury Caesar or praise him. So, if 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 you if you listen to what I'm going to say, um, then if you are trying to get into uh, um, higher education with funding, um, it will give you a good idea or a good base point to start to start from. Um, for me, education is I, I, I would say trying to get into into higher education is uh, for me it's important. Um, trying to fund it. Is important for me. There are two things that um, are worth trying to find, whether it's loans or coming out of pocket. It's relationships and then education. Um, for education, there are a lot of uh, information online now that you do not need to go to school. But the thing about higher education is it is streamlined. Um, you know what you're doing there is a purpose to it you if if you need that type of discipline it is very important um to do that and where many people do not understand especially here when you go to um when you go into mba programs and phd programs is is the relationship factor it is so big um you cannot put money on that and i know this because i have Um, I have siblings who pursued higher education. Um, I have a brother who did his PhD in Princeton University. I have a sister who did um, master's in uh, MBA in Duke. I also have another sister who did um, master's in um, in Cambridge University. The difference between their path and my path is is simple. Um, We both ended up making, we all ended up making six figures but the difference is I had to start from uh, um, from an entry level. They did not have to do that. Why? Because they pursued higher education. Um, they took the loans to do, to do that. And um, two of them, they started off their career off the, uh, um, right out of the gate in the six figure territory, uh, 150 and then 200, 200,000. Why is that? It's not necessarily just because of the education. It's, it's the the relationships they made one the the most important relationship is the school the school they went that is a relationship that uh, uh, um will follow them forever um another is is the fact that you get into the difference between going to school and not doing that is character in school because of the different backgrounds you will meet that you will not get from your own home if you are from uh, a less fortunate home that means the people that are surrounding you are people that um i would say are also less fortunate have may not have been able to make it from there and you're you are limited in terms of your thinking the way the way you think um you may not be able to think broadly especially if you're not somebody who is well read 
the thing about going to these type of schools is you will you will mingle with people from all all backgrounds um you will know what it is to make it like them and also especially from for people who are from ghana we do have some of that and black people in america believe it or not have some type of low self-esteem um they might not even apply for jobs that they can do that you get to meet all those people understand that what makes them different is all about their surrounding it's all about the people they know and from there uh, um you you will see all those barriers in your head start to fall off and it's a good place to be able to build um a great mindset for for greater success <laughs> thank you of this those are very powerful jo- uh, those are very powerful points you've given us the opportunity to get into high paying jobs and you don't have to start from the bottom you know building good relationships and a network and the the structure of the education helps and you can also build your character because you get to meet many people from different backgrounds very good points very good points mimi how about you um, how did you see uh, education did you consider it as an investment or it's just you know just go and read a book <laughs> Well, to be honest, it's like uh, like um, one of those things that you just have to take off your list. Um, that's one of the reasons. But um, thinking more about it and having um, gone to school, um, I think yeah, edu- the right education, let me please emphasize on that, can open doors for you in terms of, um, number one, opening up your mind um, to things that wouldn't have, or to different skills and different knowledge and um, opening up opportunities that would have otherwise not been uh, made available to you. Um, so uh, recently I was reading a document. I don't, I'm not really someone who likes writing, but I was reading a document that a strategy document I wrote right out of school. And I realized actually, like when I left Fresh Fresh, like not answer no hope. Anyway, um, this is just to say that I had built on 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 my skill. Um, however, I, oh yes, and the network is especially if the school you're going to, um, the people that come to the school are some people that you can leverage on to create opportunities or to partner or to do now open doors or whatever. And um, so that is also important. Um, however, I feel like some, like, especially here, we go to school, as I said, just to take that box to also say that, you know, I had an MBA and I feel like at the point where I was doing my master's, that was always at at the back of my mind, you know, just get this thing over and done with. Um, but now every, um, educational program that I get involved with, with especially now I, I do a lot more short courses more certificate programs that are directly linked to what i want to do or i i believe that that area if i am able to acquire that skill would um, help me be better or give me more opportunities so um that that's now my approach that whatever it is that i'm doing should add some value you know, so last year I did the uh, financial education instruction program. Sorry if I've mixed it up. And that really helped me to see financial education differently. And recently I wrote a, um, another strategy document or let's say a, prop- a proposal. And some of these things I learned came to play. I'm currently doing fi- a financial coaching and that has been like... Um, a co- coaching course sorry that has opened my mind to you know the different fields of um financial i mean engagement on a personal finance level initially i thought that i mean you meet a client and you just start the budget this that that but there are different um professionals that meet different needs when it comes to personal finance and i wouldn't have known that if i wasn't ex- because not something that is practiced here in ghana I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't exposed to, you know, that. Um, I, I have a, a number of more courses that, one more course I think I want to take this year. And 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 
that one too is basically to help me um uh, analyze numbers more for strategy um so uh, years after my mba i think i've been a bit more intentional about courses i take do they add value if the answer is no then i'm not going to waste my time or my resources so i think that especially in ghana we feel like we have to take that box um, but if we can be just a bit more intentional so that we get value because it's a lot of money and a lot of time you know so it has to be worth it that's my opinion if it's not worth it and you're just taking a box um, it, it's, it's, it, if no, it's not improving you, you're not getting a network. When you calculate the um, ROI, it doesn't make sense. Then uh, you sleep is better. <laughs> wow, nice, nice way to end. If you are calculating the ROI and it's not, it's not good, just sleep. And the ROI is um, retain on investment. I'll, we'll, we'll get more into that team and how to calculate it in a bit. All right, all right, all right. So, um, Mimi mentioned something that really got my attention and reminded me of a conversation I had with a friend. So, you know how um, Elvis was saying that go do pursuing higher education would get you into certain uh, certain high paying jobs, right? I had a I have a friend. He's in the base in the UK. A friend I admire a lot, a lot. One of the f uh, treats I admire millions, right? And that came into question a few so he was it was put to the test and he demonstrated that resilience a few times and this is how currently he has a certain role that people will go and do an mba to come and do it to come for that kind of role he goes to schools like oxford cambridge um lse you know to on on uh, recruitment campaigns career fairs and all that speaking about the role and the company and the people and people are looking up to him, trying to understand the role, and and he's like, he doesn't have a master's, but these people are going to are coming to school to come and do what he wants. So why should he leave the, the job he has now to try and uh, to go to school, spend a lot of money uh, to pay for school, and also go a year or two without an income just to get back to the same place, right? So um, in case any of you is at that point. This, this is a conversation I had with him, which which uh, comes as uh, fits into the topic of education as an investment. Normally, we think of investments as things that would give you profit, but if you also think about education as a risk management tool, you would realize the lesson from uh, my friend's case. And this is what happened: he left Ghana, went to stay in the UK to join his wife, and for six months he didn't have a job he applied to a thousand jobs within the space of six months and i kid you not like the math works out if he does one application an hour and he's he's assuming that while he's unemployed his job is to find a job eight hours like the math worked out and you really realize that this guy could apply to thousand jobs i know in ghana we are saying are there even thousand jobs in ghana story for another day then he gets a job. Then COVID happened. After some months, COVID happens. He's laid off and now he's out of job for nine months before he eventually found this job, which is a really good job for him. Right. And I had this conversation with him and I was like, you know what, considering the experience that you've had, maybe you really should consider this um, MBA because it can serve as a risk management tool for you. You lose your job you still you have this more attractive degree that can bring you back to the same kind of level that you are at instead of having to settle for less you know so that's where you you um you may want to consider investing in an education as a, a risk management tool last last you lose your current job do you have the necessary credentials to replace your job easily you know it's a good point to think about um without um getting too much into that um adam daniel do you have any more points that perhaps haven't been mentioned about your thinking behind education as an investment mm, i don't i don't know if i think me and you have said it all um uh, okay so for me at the time in an mb at the time it was a stepping stone to what i thought i wanted to do then which was project management and um the second one was it was a means for me to 
stay in the USA. I wasn't ready to move back home just yet. So it was more of a case of why don't you get another degree and stay, lengthen your time so you can figure things out. So at the time, I didn't think too much about like the future benefits or what not. But I think for now, um, um, I don't regret the decision at all. I think um, education is always an investment. Um, if not for anything at all, I've left with some good friendships. May not be many, maybe one or two good ones that I can always call on if anything. But I left with, I guess, a like a I guess a broader sense of thing. Is this my sound funny, but it gives a little bit more like endurance because grad school can be really challenging, especially an MBA program. And I didn't even go to like a, a top school. Like I went to like probably one of the best schools in Philadelphia, yes, but not like it's not like um <laughs> maybe it's not like Ivy League or anything like that. It's like a B school if you want to grade it in terms of like ranking, you know. So um, maybe I, I okay for me I'll say maybe I'm not reaping the benefits at the moment except when I came back to Ghana I was always a, a I guess a, a a positive that put me on the power when I was at, at the top of the power and applying for jobs but I think it can be like a long haul game where maybe five ten years from now I'll be reaping some you know benefits that I'm not seeing at the moment so yeah that's what I have to say it wasn't too much of a what am I getting at the moment decision? It was a, what am I doing? I mean, what am I getting in the future decision? It was more of a, what can I do now to make my life a little bit easier? So that's pretty much my perspective on it. Okay, great. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing that. You mentioned something that got me thinking, and, uh, and I would like to pick Elvis' brain on this. You know, I'm, I'm not in favor of a brain drain. You know? I wish we could retain talent in Ghana. Um, but then again, I'm looking in the mirror. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be a bit tempted when I'm saying what I'm saying, right? But for people whose goal may be to try to relocate to a different country, I think education is a good opportunity for them to be, enter that market because you are coming in for with a degree that no one knows and you, you want to live somewhere. You need a job to stay there. Or Elvis, what, what do you say? Um, I would say, first of all, it, it depends on what type of visa you're coming in with, right? Um, if you're coming in as a permanent a permanent resident, you know, you have a little bit more time to to figure some things out. If, you, if you're going to be able to get in and with a student visa, then you have to go to school. I think Danielle mentioned that she, she had to go to school to stay in the in the United States. So in, in that sense, um, I would say one, it depends on the visa, and two, it depends on the um, on your skill level. You know, it depends on your skill level as well. If you are coming in and you're coming in with a a degree that is not really uh, valuable, and also you're coming in from unknown territories, it's going to be difficult for somebody to take an opportunity um, to give you that opportunity, right? So maybe school is 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 a factor here. Um, for me, I would say, I, I would say this. When it comes to knowledge, I think Mimi Mimi mentioned it. If you know what you're doing, you can get most of that knowledge online, without the school. Period, and and that is true. Um, you mentioned your friend. He did, after um, he didn't pursue his masters, and he was making good money, right? But the change of location kind of threw things threw things off. For me, here, here's the thing. If you know what you want, you know what you want to do, um, you have the knowledge, then you have to seriously start to ask yourself, what is the importance of the higher education for me? It's, it's important because, here's the thing, if you do not know why, you're going to go around wasting your time in school. I know people who went to school, why? Because they were just scared of getting into um, into the working field. They did not know what to do once they were put into that field. So they continue to pile up the, the degrees just to stay away from 
uh, um, from the working environment. The truth is, whatever you do, at some point, the education you go finish. You will come back into the into the working uh, um, into the working field. Now, where higher education pays and pays greatly for me again i have to go back to the i have to go back to the to the relationships um and this is on high school level right um ellie Kim, the reason why i'm on here is because i know you from school the reason why i was able to recommend you to a friend is because i know you and you were able to recommend a friend of yours to her the higher we go in that chain the higher we go in terms of the education the more deeper and richer your connections Ah, and here's the truth. After school, it's difficult to make friends because life happens. It's in school that you're going to make most of those friends, especially those who are going to go somewhere in their uh, um, in their careers. If you're coming from Ghana and you are coming to the United States, Elikem, I think you mentioned one thing that is great. You have to consider school as a, um, some sort of risk. Uh, 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 form of risk management. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's so it's so important um, because sometimes when you're coming from when you're coming from those areas, they look at your education, they feel like it's it's subpar. So you might want to come here and do something about it. Go to a better school. Um, go to a better school. Get better credentials. You know, to make up for where you're coming from to make up for an accent to make up for so many other things that might be going um that might not be going in your in your favor but for me one thing i've realized and one thing i've noticed because i could easily just oppose because i have a sister who did an mba program here we have two totally different personalities and what we did for ourselves was the best thing we could do for ourselves if i had gone to Duke MBA, whatever I would have, I would have just messed up my career. I wouldn't know what to do. If she had done what I had done, she wouldn't know what to do because we are two different people. She thrives where there is structure, and in school there is structure. If you get the right school, you get the right people. There's enough structure to help you grow and develop the things you need to develop to get you into the positions you need to. When you do not go to school, it's it's different. You need to create your own structure. You need to build drive, especially to be able to go through the different positions you have to go through to be able to get to uh, um, the high management, high management roles. I easily, I can easily make friends. I can easily uh, um, network. She cannot, so she needs that structure that will help her make get those networks she needs that structure that will help her skip a few um some hurdles that are going to be in her way so if you want to look at these things you just have to look at what is best for me what is best for my situation what is best for my uh, uh, um for my personality what is best for for my future if you're going to want to be a a ceo that's what you want then you have to understand that higher education helps because there is a, usually there is a ceiling for people who do not have higher education. If you want to go up to the CEO level, that's if you're not going to make your own company. So that is what I have to say about that. I mean, we could go on and on, but I, I would like to stop here. Elvis, I, I like what you said so much here. Yeah. I like it because um, on Money Convos, we like to have some divergent ideas that could make us delve into the matter even better. All right. And you, you said something that you need to know what is in it, what's you need to know yourself you need to know what will work for you and then you can determine whether higher education is for you or not for you like for me I, yeah people know yeah, intelligence i like reading books blah 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 but very often i encourage people don't be in a rush to start school don't waste your money on an education that you're not sure of you know if it means go and learn a trade go and learn a trade and be the best plumber be the best sculpt, uh, sculptor be the best painter be the best footballer be the best whatever but there's no use going to do an education and being miserable at it. Whereas you are throwing away your talent or you are throwing away a better opportunity for you, which is outside of school. So I, I like that you highlighted this and uh, it comes with this caveat where people need to know that if, if you are going to go outside of the schools, the formal structure that the school can give, 
you need to put in extra effort. You need to be extra motivated to do the le- networking, the learning, and have those necessary experiences. You know, um, so yeah, just just as, as an aside, you know, people talk about how um, Jeff, uh, how uh, this this guy uh, Bill Gates and Zuckerberg dropped out of school. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, what school did they drop out of? <laughs> you know, so there's there's that, and it tells you more about the person's character. You know, and, and and what they have inside of them. All right. Yeah, so, and Elikem, I I like to say this. It's not just what yeah. school they dropped out of, right? Mm-hmm. Um, these guys. The thing about looking at those guys and using that as a uh, um as your argument is, it, there's something called survivor bias, right? Um, and these guys, because they've made it so big, you can easily look at that and be like, oh, then it's possible it can be done, but. It's just the people who have survived. That's what you're seeing. The truth is when you go deeper into the numbers, people with higher education are doing so much better with those who do not have a higher education. When you look at the percentages, it's it's scary. It makes sense to go to school. Um, and even though I was saying that you need to know um, what you need to do, um, I think Danielle mentioned that she still doesn't know what she's doing with it. Um, the thing is, I don't even want that to um, derail other people if they don't know what to do. The truth is, there are many people, again, yes, I want you to take a look at it hard, but if you've already done it, it's, it shouldn't be a point of regret or something, which I know other people feel. But the truth is, there are so many people who do not know why they did what they did. But after so many yes they come to realize it was best it was great that they did it even if it's for just um uh, what's the word i'm looking what's the word i'm looking for it's just for societal approval the reason why i say that is um you might not have learned anything because you didn't know what you wanted to do you might not have learned anything doing your masters and in your mba and like mimi you learned so many other things from just courses but because society is so biased towards education it might not have benefited you but to them that is what is beneficial to them and you can you can use that as a a, um as a bait to get into where 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 you need to go great 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 okay so now let's get a point quickly um (laughs) i have a sense of it yeah briefly yeah quickly yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say that for me, it's it's not even that I, I don't know what I'm doing with it. It's more of a, um, it's not directly correlated to what I'm doing at the moment. But I don't think that maybe in the future or later, it may not apply to another thing that I decide to venture in. So I just wanted to add that um, as well. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so... um. Let's let's head into some of the ways we can we can fund them. Now, a, a quick brainstorm before we delve deep into them, right? Let's just list some of the ideas and then we will get into them seriously. So, let's start with Adam. Any any ideas of how people can fund higher education? Just quick brainstorm. Oh, um, let's say from family, friends and family. Good friends and family. Okay, Mimi, how about you? Uh, well, depending on when you want to go, you can save and invest towards it. But sometimes, if it's quite close, <laughs> you realize that you haven't got it much by the time you are ready. So, but at least you can have something and then um, look at other uh, options. Oh, okay, great. So, save and invest towards that goal. So, we've got two so far. David, are you back? Yes, sir. I'm back. Nice, nice. Any, any quick brainstorm? Any quick brainstorm for us? You have kids that you are thinking about this for them in some years to come. Any quick ideas? Yes, I've I've gone uh, one of the routes, which uh, I think somebody said um, investing for them. I have um, college savings for all my three kids. Also, you can do you can apply for grants or scholarships. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. As Elikem, I'm sure you found out over here. So yeah, you, you can apply for those, um, maybe gifts from family members. Um, I don't know, those of us that, or those of you who have rich uncles and stuff who can just 
write a check, and then you do one year of Harvard. You know, that one too is an option. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. We'll be delving deeper into this in a bit. So, so far we have um, family and friends funding. We have saving and investing to fund it yourself. We have grants and scholarship opportunities. Any, any others? Any others on the quick brainstorm before we delve into them? Elvis, you have any other funding option for us? Loans. Loans. Great, great, great. Yeah. Loans. Yeah, That's I'll a big one. Loan. Okay, great. So, two calls for loans. That's a big one. Okay. Are there any other ways or we can just start delving into them? Um, David? Also, uh, either um, employer or government sponsorships. It's a bloody good one. Employer or government sponsorships. Nice one there. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Thank you. Okay, so now let's let's head into them. Self-funding. Let's start with that. When you yourself are going to depend on yourself. When, when I was doing my undergrad, I see my father knew. He called me. To, I went to visit him in his office sometime. But yes, yes. I did. At that time, I wasn't living with my father, so I used to go and visit him in his office. That's how I used to see my father. And one time he was like, so what are my plans after school? And he made it very clear that he's not paying for a master's. <laughs> Lo and behold, he's not giving me anything. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so um, I had to figure out how I self-fund it myself, right? So uh, Mimi, you started us on this path. Um, I think the dynamics for self-funding may be very different. And this self-funding I mean by saving and investing towards the education. It's very different for if you are doing it in Ghana versus if you are doing it um, abroad. So perhaps would you want to give, give us your experience funding an education in Ghana? Okay. Um, I, I think the difference is the amount involved, right? And the, yeah, um, and the, the currency involved. The salaries, <laughs> the salaries you are saving from, I mean... Um, so personally for me, when I started work, I, I, I think I've shared here before that I wasn't like very intentional with my finances or not seeing my finance, I mean, certain goals. So it wasn't something that I had a sinking fan for that, you know, I'm setting aside this money, I'm going to school. No, I was just saving. I just had an investment in general. I just put some money there and I had something for my, my son. Uh, my first child. So I, my sister-in-law went to school. Ellie came, you know her. And I don't even know. Yeah. Her. Before that, a colleague of mine who is now in the uh, in the States also pursuing um, higher education and also working. We're, we're looking for, looking at our, our, our salaries <laughs> and the cost of higher education. We're looking for something that, you know, will make sense. So I remember he mentioned that a uh, KNUSC has this um, course some something. So we ended up at the Zoom Lion um, uh, University somewhere at Ubuju, if I'm not mistaken, to find out about the course. And when we got the sheet, I mean, there was 20,000. It was very cool because already I could raise like 10K and then the rest, of course, the school, I think it was a one-year program. So within the one year, we'll figure a way out. So that was the plan. Um, but my husband um, worked in educational consultancy. That is helping people get into these um, schools and the rest. And he's always been biased to, you know, getting an international education, blah, blah, blah exposure whatever so he was against me doing that because you know me me i'm frugal i'll go for the cheapest option <laughs> so he tried to you know encourage me to look um at something else and then also honestly when i finished my undergrad i didn't really feel like i've gotten value from this so i said i wasn't going to go to school in ghana again but the finances took me back to that Zoom Lion school. So it's my husband that said, oh, why don't you, you know, look at other options? So I went to Webster. Webster was $18,000 there. Sister had only 9000 Ghana cities. I think the dollar then was about four point something. Sister had only 9000 How am I going to go to, how am I going to pay the fees? So I just paid the first for the first program. 
and that's what there is friends from no friends of course family my parents my husband fortunately my husband had gotten some good job that was paying him dollars then so he was just funding me with that money and then my parents also supported and i took the money for my investment the money for my child everything i think the only thing i didn't touch was my retirement funds um i i just took everything to be able to um pay that school fees and it was really a relief to pay that last one you know because it was it wasn't easy um so that that's how i funded mine it was a blend of um, savings and a blend of friends and family my sister-in-law however had her father and um, finance the whole thing for her so that's the difference between the two of us for me i paid myself my husband um did a chunk of it and then my family my parents helped by his was fully funded by daddy yeah that's nice that's nice so i uh, i see a nice twist you, you brought in there your husband helped fund it so those of you in relationships, please be be very good to your and nice to your partners. Why? But don't don't use this to go and say I'm going to find a rich man or rich woman to go and date, uh, or a rich person to go and date. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, anyway, um, I digress. But yeah, very good experiences. Thank you for sharing those. Perhaps I'll do a little bit of a segue into um, for, for uh, to bring in Adam. Adam, you also mentioned some experience with helping people with the family and friends to fund it. Before I circle back on self self funding and you know international um, programs, can you talk about the family and friends one? Yeah. Um. So basically, in 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 these things, what happens is that um, you look at first which uh, ones are affordable. You know, in terms of the school fees, we try to get the best. You know. Uh, 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 um, deal out there and like Mimi said I would I would go to that side before coming back to what you Bailey asked because my story is a bit like his um, in the sense that um, when I was about starting out on my uh, journey I had something saved up already I think mine too was about seven thousand dollars or so so I had about uh, half of that or so saved up already so I was able to quickly pay up for that and then god being so good during that the the year i had a lot of uh, i mean side jobs so i was able to use that and pay it off now with in terms of family i remember there was this time we were having this conversation you know if me didn't have that kind of good relationship with the family it would be very difficult to be able to get people to buy into what you are doing so it's, yes, very, yeah. it's very very important to let's not bend the bridges that we have around us you know just so that when you need help you can be able to rely on such people and then also um in terms of myself today we i used to be in an investment club when i first came out of school and we used to pull funds together you know and so by the time we're due to i think each of us took some turns in uh, pursuing some, um, how would I call it, further education. And we use that pool of funds to sort of sort ourselves out as we went along. And it was a good uh, way of being able to help ourselves because the idea was to um, build ourselves out uh, um, professionally and all that. But even currently, what we we are just doing with one of ourselves, okay, I, I left that investment club and now I have another investment club that I'm with. Is one person also had the opportunity to also get to go to go to school, and then we were able to put some of the funds together. You know, all these things are clearly spelled out and at the beginning. So that was also another way where people could fall on to help to support themselves as they were going to school. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So don't bend bridges. Your family, your friends any associations that you have you don't just up and leave you don't just treat people anyhow because you never know when you'll be able to, you want to call on them to assist you and it's way easier to for people to assist people who are nice and hard working and give themselves up you know just 
sacrifice or give towards the greater good. So when is your turn? People will be more willing to help out. So keep that in mind and don't bend those bridges. That's a great one there. Thank you. Um, thank you, Adam, for talking about that. I So I mentioned earlier, I'm pursuing my MBA at uh, Cornell University. Charlie, this Ivy League thing is not cheap, man. It's like oh, $240,000 about, you know, all in cost, tuition, living expenses, transportation, all that. Uh, yeah, two, yeah, close to 250000 right, Charlie? Depending on where, where the city is at, you're looking at more than 2 million Ghana cities, right? See, no amount of savings I do <laughs> or I could have done in the last seven years since I left university could have helped prepare me for this. No amount of money that my my retired father and my almost retiring mother could have saved all their lives could have helped prepare for this. In addition to all the other responsibilities, Charlie. So sometimes uh, I just I, at the point I'm making at this point uh, at this particular juncture is sometimes depending on the kind of um, program and the kind of school that you are looking for, self. Um, Self-funding in terms of saving to invest is highly unrealistic. It's 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 highly unrealistic within a certain space of time, you know. So you may not want to consider that, you know. So um, yeah, for for that, then for this kind of expensive education, that's when other funding measures come into play. So speaking of other funding measures, we can now switch gears and talk about. Um, scholarships yeah let's let's talk about scholarships i wish i so wish paulina was here to talk about her, her experience because i believe she mentioned that uh, she, her education which is in the uk a phd in the uk is being funded by the ghana scholarship secretariat so one very good option that you can get is that um you can get a you can go to the scholarship secretariat and see what's available. And sometimes people would look at what scholarships are available to determine the school that they want. Sometimes so people get the school, then they go to the scholarship secretariat to see what they can do. But I think now they are located at um, where in Ridge, where Wayek is not too far from Accra High School. And they have a nice website. You can register an account, you know, get notifications. I haven't received any notifications. So I don't know if it works, but you know, good old Ghana, just pop in there and talk to people and see what can be done. So that's one. Um, any any other ideas? Uh, David, do you have any other ideas for scholarships that people can pay, uh, can take advantage of? Um, not in Ghana, but out, out here um, in the good US of A, there are a whole bunch of them. If you know the right websites, nowadays, um, I, I believe there are some apps cry that would, would give you a list of them. There are Pell Grants, there are um, different types of stuff that you can apply for. Some, you know, minority, some based on your, um, a friend is saying, course that you're studying, some based on even the state that you live in. It's like, maybe, you know, you can apply. And granted, they are not all going to give you the full, let's say, $40,000 that you need for your, you know, for your schooling. You might get, you know, 500 here, 1,000 here, you know, 200 here. It's all great. You know, just apply for those. Some of them is just as simple as you just writing an essay explaining why, you know, you deserve a scholarship. And of course, you know our people, some of them will go and put up this sad story about how I am a Janka and my, all my entire family, everybody is dead and blah, blah, blah. But hey, if it gets you the money, why not, you know? So yeah, that one too is there. Yeah, you know, David, I, I like how you mentioned that sometimes the only thing standing in, between, in your the way of you and the scholarship is writing a few essays. Sometimes yep. it's even just one essay. Yes. Actually, some people say, ah, now wh how much at all am I coming to get that I'm going to write so many essays and all that? But, Charlie, even if it's $5,000, it's a Yeah, I mean, if, if, nice. if you like you and I that came in with zero and trying to fund uh, a friend is an international student fee education mm -hmm. act. 500 or 1,000 here and there, Charlie, it, it, it really, really adds up. Yeah. It really, really adds up. And for the people who are, who are, you know, residents and citizens and all that kind of stuff, you know, there are different types of grants that you can apply for, you know, that lots of them are free, you know, so 
it's all about knowing where to go and what you need to do to apply for it. Maybe sometimes you just need somebody to say that, oh, this guy, um, I used to work with him, or this guy is a volunteer at my church. And I've had to write some of those essays, some of those recommendations for people in the past, uh, you know, couple years. That, oh, this guy used to volunteer at my church. He's a very nice gentleman. He will be a good engineer. He will be a good blah, blah, blah in the future. But, you know, and then you send it in and voila, there you go. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So David has mentioned some of the scholarships and just and you can do Google, just Google these scholarships. Um, they, I think in Ghana today is Get Fund. And the schools that you are considering to on their websites, they usually have a part about financial aid. You can go there and then look at a, a host of sources. All right. And sometimes the, even these sources are not even available to the general public. So when you talk to students in the school, they will tell you that the resources that they got after they got in, you know, and that's where you even realize that the, the, the pool is way bigger than you could imagine. So, yeah, um, there's also another uh, scholarship for those considering schooling in the UK. There's a Chevening scholarship uh, for for people from Commonwealth countries. And, and the thing about a lot of these scholarships is you need to get your timing right. So uh, I think... I've forgotten when Chevening closes, but I think it closes somewhere in September, October. So that means you need to really start planning ahead if you want higher education. It's not, I think about it today, next week I'm getting to school. No, no, no. It's like a year, two years ahead of time because you need to get all the timing right. You need to prepare your right application. You need to have a good story. Like David was saying, before David would write a story that you are a volunteer, that means you should have volunteered for some time and made some impact. Because it's not just that oh, he was a volunteer on paper. They would actually ask about the kind of experiences you had. And if you've not lived those experiences, Jack, hey, they, they will cut you out. They can, pardon my French, but they can smell bullshit from a mile away. You know, so um, uh, there's that. Um, does anyone have any other ideas of how people can find scholarships? You just flash your mic and I'll bring you up. Elvis, do you know any other uh, organizations that people go to for scholarship? Okay, let's let's hear from Ed Dem. Yeah, I think that um, just like the seven, in, there's also the Commonwealth Scholarship for UK. I, I know a couple of friends who went in through the Commonwealth Scholarship. That one also, I think, it also has specific timing. And like you said, I think the timing is everything. And you know, there's a lot of information um, online. And I think you just have to spend your time sifting through the chaff and then getting the right information. And it will surprise you that you can actually go through the process yourself. And once you read, and the thing at least I like about the foreign schools and all these foreign scholarships is that there's so much transparency. Like there's nobody sitting on any information trying to give advantage over somebody. Like you could just see almost all the information you need. So just spend time reading and you would, you would be able to find that. And I think there's also the Hong Kong fellowships or something like that. That's for those who are more research um, inclined, if you want to go the, the research route, that one too is also the end. New Zealand and Australia also have something similar like the Hong Kong fellowship. You could check on that also. That's a good point. That's, those are some very good points. And um, those into research, there are those options for you. Um, I'd like to also mention some more scholarships. So those those uh, with an interest in the U.S., there's 40, especially for the le for the ladies, 40 scholarships. It's F-O-R-T-E. It's geared towards women. And yeah, I think it's women. Then there's also the consortium. That's consort like consortium, you know, C O N S O R T I U M. There's consortium. There's also M L T, which is a management leadership for tomorrow. I remember this one. Douglas sent me the link for this particular one. Hi, Douglas, in the audience. Yeah, Douglas sent me the link for this particular one. I didn't use any of these. And, and I'll be honest, Charlie, honestly, I was looking at this thing as pure business, Charlie. I mean, I don't get time to search, they say scholarship. But anyway, that's the buy, the buy. And the, the demands were so high. 
Um, Daniel also pushed some uh, some some scholarships to me some time back. Daniel, you remember which school was at Stanford, right? Uh, yes, it was Stanford. Yeah, they had some scholars, something like that. So every school would have certain yeah. particular ones. But yeah, the, the the thing about these scholarships, yeah, that I really like the forty MLT consortium. These, in fact, search for this word fellowships fellowships there's something about them that i really like they don't just give you the money they give you a whole lot of support so these these mlt consortium 40 before school starts before the program starts they have a conference for them whether virtual or in person and then they go and meet a lot of practitioners and even companies come and recruit ahead of time so before you get to school, you have a job waiting for you. You have an opportunity to have a job waiting for you because you're already getting interviews. Yes, you have to. What, and what did you have to do? You have to write, just write a few extra essays. Of course, your life has to be able to be interesting and impactful enough for you to fill up those essays. But you have sponsors, you have um, mentors. You, and when I say sponsors, not just people who give you money. You know, there's mentor, someone who advise you. And there are sponsors, someone who take your CV and put it on the table. Say, you guys, look at this CV. Someone who defend you in the boardroom. You know, that's, that's what we are talking about in terms of sponsors. And that's what some of these programs offer. 40 MLT consortium, they have those ones. And you have a wide network. So that program becomes like a school of its own. You know, office was talking about the benefits of the network. You have so many people that you can call on. All right. And when I was finishing undergrad, I had the SEO program I was in for people, especially for people going to investment bank and sponsors for educational opportunities. I know that I don't know if they're also big on higher education, but if you are, um, yeah, you should probably speak to Douglas, Douglas in the audience, speak to Douglas in the audience about SEO. You know, those are all opportunities that you get because SEO, people who went through SEO, they keep getting a lot of information, emails about all these scholarships and opportunities when schools come because they know that when they go to people through this 40 MLT SEO consortium, you're already good talent. So people will come looking for you. So it makes your life even easier because the school that you're going, they're going to use it to get a job, right? So that you can get money. And how much wouldn't it even be better if you only you get the money before and even after through the job so these are all very good opportunities you need to consider again 40 that's f-o-r-t-e then mlt that's management leadership for tomorrow i think i may be getting that wrong and then there's the consortium in fact consortium even has this as benefits of consortium is you can apply to certain schools through consortium and you get a discount on the admission fees. Like some of these ad admission fees are like $250, $200. I think the cheapest I ever paid was $150. Of course, some of the schools will give you waivers. So there's that to also consider. So yeah, it, it, it's like applying to the school is, as you apply through the consortium, you are getting access to the schools too, and it makes your life way simpler for you, right? Okay, so... Um, Let's see, uh, on scholarships, does anyone... David, I think you had wanted to say something earlier. I, I don't remember what I was going to say. Did we already talk about employer-based um, funding? Not yet, in fact. So this would be a good... I guess if we've exhausted the scholarships, and let, in case I, this wasn't loud enough, get fund in Ghana, get fund also. Your churches... Um, David, sorry, I'll just circle back to you so that you tell us about the employer-funded ones. Um, there's get fund i know this i think a friend of mine attended um because of his hometown is it newmont or so there's newmont is it goldfields i think goldfields or so or national or npa uh, petroleum authority or so they fund some educational programs uh, even inside of ghana and outside and sometimes depending on your industry you know, if, if you did something technical, like those who went to tech and did those sciences, engineering and the like, in certain fields, they have those uh, kind of scholarships. So talk to the people in your industry and ask how did they fund it? What are the opportunities? If it's engineering, maybe you go to the Ghana Institute of Engineering and then f see what kind of scholarships they have for that. Adam, do you know of any scholarships related to, you know, the things that people did at tech? and uh, those quantity surveyors, land economy and those things, engineering. 
I um I think one of the things that happens is that especially for those who are still in undergrad, um some opportunities come um uh, through the various universities. I think some of the universities have some form of like maybe like an MOU between them and maybe some schools abroad and all that. So some opportunities come and I think people should just be on the lookout and, and or make some inquiries. And I don't know if I remember clearly, but I think while I was in school, somebody or a couple of people talked about some sort of grant or so that, um, was it the municipal or the district assemblies were being given or something? I don't know, but like there are, you know, on, unlike elsewhere in Ghana, there's so much information that is there, but it's not really there, you know, so probably you need to talk to the right people and find out exactly what it is that is there so that you can also take advantage. It's like you were saying, it could be a few thousands of CDs here or thousands of dollars here, but eventually they all come together and add up, especially if you have scrapped all your savings and your investments together, those monies can come in handy. Thank you. Nice, nice. It's the little drops of water that make the mighty ocean. May be left with your last 5,000 cities to be able to qualify or to be able to get enough money to go to school. And you may just get that one or two last scholarships to push you there. So everything counts. Looking at the charts, if you swipe to the left side of the, the main room, you see that Abna Asante is dropping marvelous gems in there. She's talking about for France, the embassy sponsors scholarships each year together with the scholarship secretariat. In fact, a lot of governments do this. So that's a good point if you are uh, considering schools in certain countries for example france go to the scholarship secretariat and see what is available then and in fact if something is not available you just put them on notice they will, they will probably find a way to prompt you when they come live then she also mentioned that europe is generally cheaper when it comes to tuition it's the proof of living expenses that usually poses a problem and i i know especially I think Germany is free for, uh, and then uh, Norway, the Scandinavian countries too, they are actually cheap or tuition free, you know, so it's just about how you get money to keep body and soul together <laughs> as you are there. So those are very good points. And the last one is also about the fact that even if you go to countries that are not English speaking, they have English programs. So you don't have to worry about the language being a, a barrier. You can go to Germany and do an English language program in uh, or be taught in English in Germany. So don't worry too much about that. Thank you so much, Abna, for sharing that. Douglas, you want to share some thoughts on, on this topic of sponsorship? Yeah, Ellie came, yeah. To add to what Eden was saying. So um when it comes when it comes to um local universities like University of Ghana, K and USD, um, there are so many opportunities to get funding from the financial aid office of those schools. So when I was in school, um, I, I, I researched on some of them. They are, for University of Ghana, there are so many, including University of Ghana Scholarship, uh, Fondazone, I was on Fondazone. So Fondazone Edu is like, uh, it's a foundation from Italy and the sponsor university students in Africa, so they are in KNUST, the University of Ghana, and all that. So, they sponsor, they will sponsor your education from level 100 to level 400, provided <laughs> you maintain your performance. So, yeah, they don't joke with um, GPA and all those things. So, I think that's also helped me to <laughs> um, study hard and all that. So, um, there are so many opportunities here in Ghana as well. So in case you are wondering, like you, you get well, one disadvantage is that you need to get into the university before you can you can access the scholarship. So provided you've started and you've registered for let's say first semester, then you apply. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Douglas. He had more motivation for you to learn and get that. GPA. Well, GPA no crane yeah. 3.97 and Mr. Valedictorian. Yeah. Mm, so we have funders you need to, to, to thank for that. They put and, fire on your bomb bomb. Yeah, and GMPC yeah, so GMPC sponsors um undergrad as well. Yeah. 
Nice, nice. GNPC. Charlie, I know that in Ghana it will be a bit tough to get a GNPC one, but you 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 fail if you don't try. You know, so yeah. why not? apply find out the times that they will come in i i know that gmpc the window is very short so like i said this thing plan well ahead keep your ears on the ground you start asking people in church in school in different places charlie do you know anyone at gmpc do you know anyone here you know so that once you hear that the thing is out now you put in your thing you know and these things your documents being ready there are certain documents that should always be ready right your certificate if you've graduated go for your certificate to go and clear and go for your certificate have it ready get keep a recent copy of your transcript available all the time so that when a window opens no matter how short that window is you are ready you understand if you don't have a passport to it better get the passport if you don't have ghana card these days get one you know just make sure all your documents are ready so that when the opportunity comes you just slide in there real quick and then you take advantage of that opportunity yeah Elikem, i'd like to add a little bit to what you just said and uh, mm -hmm ran out for a beating um to, to your point getting about uh, getting your document and stuff ready um i've realized that when it comes to this process of getting funding um a lot of people end up with charlie a lot of psychological problems mental problems mental health problems people break down when it comes to pursuing a higher education and getting into all these loans. That's even before that and after the loans. Some of these things you are talking about is a great way to manage those things and uh, um, have some kind of, you know, Charlie head clear and stuff like that. So th that is very important. I wanted to add that before um, I leave. And thank you guys for having me. It's always great joining you guys. Thank you so much, Elvis. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure listening to you and I, uh, Elvis, I think your social media handle is uh, the proverbial man right on can you just give us a recap of your social media yes yes it's proverbial man proverbial underscore um underscore man that's what it is yeah thank you great great on instagram twitter everywhere all right thank you so much Elvis. okay so um, uh, we continue and and i think what Elvis said is a very good point we have people who they, they they have head you know ghana we get head all the school that they made us go all that mental and things that we've done we have head but Charlie, sometimes all that separating you is some document that is supposed to be under your mother's uh, mattress that is not there again so find, keep track of all your records and you'll be fine so david let's talk about the employer funded ones especially for the in fact yeah you let's hear from you and also chip in on that side um, so for that one, most employers, um, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, but most employers would pay for you to go do a, a graduate degree if you're getting a degree that is in line with what the company does or is in line with what you are doing. The downside, if you can call it that, is that sometimes the stipulation is that you have to work for them for maybe a year or two after you're done with schooling or else you got to pay it back. Some people look at that as, oh, after I'm done, that's a year or two where they're probably not going to fire me. So I have a guaranteed job for maybe a year or two. Others see it as after I'm done with the schooling, now I'm in line to get a, a pay bump. But then here I am stuck with this company and I can't move anywhere. So you know, depending on how you see it, that could be um, a good thing or not. Yeah, thanks. That was great, that was great. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah, talk to your employer and see if they have such opportunities. I know my former employer many years ago, in fact, if you look at all the, if you look at the head, uh, or Pani, you all know Pani, if you, he, he was, he went to do his master's and came back, um, our chief investment officer Deborah Amakote, who we also heard from some time back, also went to do her masters and came back. You know, you'll be bonded for a while, but if 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 it's um, it's all about you looking at is it worth it for you? You know, is it worth it for you? Then who doesn't like free money? Yeah, they keep you there for a year or two, and also you need to look at it that you you go abroad, you come back. What if you don't have job? You know, there are people who come back with masters and they are still struggling to find jobs, you know, but you have something guaranteed for you, as David was saying. So look at these opportunities. And again, 
That means you need to be a very hard worker. You need to be an exceptional person for the company to want to invest in you to that level. You know, so that's that's a, a good point. Uh, and perhaps if you are not yet at the stage where you are thinking about funding your higher education, maybe you are still doing your undergraduate and you are thinking about which kind of companies to go and work for after school. Maybe that's this could be an opportunity for you to think about it because I know that in, some companies use this as a selling point. In the US, Amazon is offering people, uh, their staff, some uh, opportunities to take certain courses or at some universities that they will pay for your undergrad or something like that. So these are all things that they use for attracting good talent and retaining them. Um, so I think, I don't know if this happens in Ghana, but I know that a lot of these big four companies in abroad, at least abroad, they would fund it for you to go the consulting companies. They would, they would fund for you to go and do your education and come back, but you just have to come back and work for them. So if you are still in university thinking of where to work, this is a good way to consider the kind of places that you work. All right. Um, let's see. There's also the, uh, ah, good. Another important employer, before I forget to mention, government of Ghana. I see, I see a friend in here. I see a friend in here who oh she's gone but i know i, I know some friends who are um, who are who are civil servants in ghana or is it civil or public servants they are employed by the government of ghana one such friend is in south korea she just knows that she'll be bonded for is it four years or so um so she's gone on steadily for 18 months come back save her time and then see what is next for her um i know I know of people who got into government service and then they just went out for school and they've come back and they are fine. You know, see, when the education is in your head, when the skills is in your head, no one can take it out. Don't worry, let them pay for the school. When you finish serving your time, you go and do what you want to do with it. That's if money is a big deal for you and you, 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 you feel like this is how you can fund it. Why not? Go ahead and do it, you know. And also, um, yeah, besides, governments also have scholarships. So um, there's... There's that for even if you don't work for the government, they have scholarships. Uh, yeah. And to our audience, if you're in the US, there are many such companies that offer to pay your uh, your pay for your schooling. So uh, that's that's an example for you. In fact, I digress and I'll say that I was talking to someone. She's not Ghanaian, of course. She's based. She's an African-American based in the US for a long time. And she was thinking about her MBA. And she got an she got an, a two year MBA program from a no one year executive MBA from a, a school and she asked her company to pay and they wouldn't pay. She's like okay. Then she got another offer for a two year MBA and that one they were supposed to pay ninety thousand dollars or so for a one year executive MBA. They didn't pay. So she got another offer from another school, also a top school, and this time it's a two year program and it was a full ride, full tuition more than hundred thousand dollars paid all expense paid and she left the company and now they still need her skills so they are hiring her as a consultant and paying her still close to where she was at so you know when companies look at the math they will say that well perhaps if she was such good talent after all why didn't they just pay the ninety thousand dollars to keep her rather than let her go and then she went sell her services to other people including them and they are, and they'll still have to hire a full time person to replace her, you know. So, yeah, they, they, they come. Good companies are aware of these things, and so look out for these opportunities for you. Okay, let's go on to another type of funding. Let's see. Um, me, I know Mimi was uh, stepping aside for a second, so Mimi, you can just flash your mic if you are back, and um, we know we can call on you. The next type of funding is one that is very close to my heart something very close to my heart and i'm going to go on a bit of a rant but i think i'll allow uh, perhaps i'll allow maybe uh, someone else who has experience with this to go ahead first loans so we've tried all these options you could maybe you, you did you couldn't save enough to afford it that's fine your family and friends charlie they, they can't they can't give you enough your church card you've not finished the uh, buying uh, benches for the church so they couldn't organize for you you went to scholarship secretariat they said maybe they'll give you only something small or they didn't or did nothing is available your employer says bobo they, they don't do that so what's it gonna be last last charlie is left with the loan 
And depending on the kind of school that you are going for, I think a loan is a bloody good point, a bloody good one. I mentioned earlier my funding for Cornell is about all in this is going to cost me about two hundred and four, yeah, north of more than two hundred and forty thousand dollars, you know, for the two year program. And all funded by loans. But last last minute, just before I left Ghana, I got some uh, forty thousand. So that that helped, you know, keep that helped calm my heart small. All right, but I, I was going in at a point where I had zero scholarship, you know. And um, perhaps at this particular point, speaking of this, uh, let me add this. I saw a chat that came in um, asking about the UK school. See, no matter what school you go to, negotiate for funding. Ask them what they can offer. Sometimes the schools have the leeway. For me, when I when I first got admission, they said they don't negotiate. And by no but other people negotiated and they got it. And it's good when you have offers from multiple schools. Then you tell them, hey, I have school A and school B. So if you want me to come to you, what's up? What's up? You know? <laughs> so there's that. But I, I did not do that. That was um a, 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 something I in hindsight was wrong of me. I should have pushed harder. But last, last, when I pushed, they still gave me something quite uh, okay cons compared to other people, you know. So you, you have that opportunity um, to negotiate with the schools, all right? Okay, so back to this. Two hundred. Does anyone else have a, a experience with, uh, with taking loans for higher education before I go on my long uh, sermon? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm the only person who, who is who is taking on such a risk uh, david how about you I, I took some for undergrad oh okay 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 you, you want to tell yeah. us okay so let's let's see why did you do it how was the experience like and you've been out of undergrad for a minute yes. how is it going oh it's fully paid off me My and man. governments have no problem um first of all i did it because it was the only way out and it was very very easy I remember at some point, even while I was applying to schools, my main concern was how I was going to pay for it. I knew at some point my dad was not going to carry me the whole four years. So cost was very, very much on my mind. So, you know, the first year or so he came in, boom, paid everything. Second year, uh, so, you know, I, I, I had tried... At that time, I think I, I looked at Legon and all the universities in Ghana, but I don't know if it's done now, but those times you go on, you type in Legon on, online and it's like, there's nothing there. Like nobody to talk to, nowhere to be able to see if I can transfer back home. So it was a struggle. And then after a while, I gave up on that. And then God being so kind, um, there was this thing U.S. Visa Lottery, I did it, boom, it happened for me. Now I became a, a green card holder, so I was now eligible for all the plethora of opportunities that the U.S. had to offer. So one of them being being able to apply for the government loan for tuition, which is called the FAFSA. So I applied for that. Oh, the money was just coming in left and right. And um, I used that to go to school. They usually give that to you at a very, very low interest rate. And you don't have to make payments up until you're uh, six months after you graduated for, from school. Because ideally, that's when you probably find a job. So I was able to take that and um, I got some of that. I got some Pell Grants. I got some scholarships because now I was more qualified for, for that. Um, but yeah. And after I, I got out of school and got me a job, I've been able to pay it off. So, Yes. That's nice. That's nice. Um, perhaps at this particular point, you know, I, I, I want to ask you how you felt about the, you know, Ghana for the, the I think the, when it comes to loans, there are two types of people. There are people who are not afraid to borrow. I think that's what, that's what we're talking about last week, right? Our culture. People who are not afraid to borrow and not pay versus those of the rest of us who are just so fearful of loans and it, it kind of comes with some stigma. How did you how did you feel about taking the loan and having it? Master, stigma what? I had no qualms. I have I had zero feelings about taking the loan. It was either I get the loan or I had to drop out of school. And for me, 
dropping out of school was not an option. So I was doing like three jobs. I remember very, very well. I had a job at McDonald's. I, have a, I had a job at Harris Teeter. I had a job at um, uh, a friend saying Eckerd, which is a, a, a pharmacy store. And I was still making it to go. I even went to the school and lied to them that, you know, where my father is in a third world country, they don't allow you to move so much money at once until you know, there are offense and restrictions. So every time I'd go, every month I'd go to the, the student billing office and then I'll go and use my credit card, put $100 here, put $200 here, put $300 here. I put myself on a payment plan up until, you know, doors open for me to be able to get the, the loan. So I was not even thinking of stigma of, no, 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 no. And besides, as you, LKM, know, over here, opportunities there, P quite. You know, when I, even when I was in school, I was, I was able to get a job that was paying me. So I started making payments on that loan while I was in school, still taking the loan. And, you know, I knew, say, once I'm done, I'll be able to pay it off easy. And, you know, the stigma, oh, please, I was not caring about any of those things. Nice, nice. Hard guy. He's not caring about the stigma, right? So, yeah, that's the first thing. Like, don't worry about the stigma. Back where, where we come from, people are so worried about stigma. All right, let me show you something. For me, my experience with taking the loans, this is probably why I was not even so concerned about scholarships because I had done the math and I said that, see, if it is a loan I will take to go to this Ivy League school, I am going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. What do I say? So, um, what do we mean by return on investment? Mimi said that early in the conversation. Look at it as any investment that you are doing. You are going to put money down for an education and you want money back after you are done with your education. And how do you get your money back? You get an employment and the money you are making in the job you get after the education should be so much that you can pay off your loan comfortably without feeling under any pressure. That's the kind of math that you need to do. So you need to look at and say that, okay, what school do I want? How was the cost of their, uh, their tuition? It's not just tuition. People just think about tuition. No, 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 no. You have to eat. You have to have a roof over your head. You have to transport yourself from here to wherever you have to go. So all in cost, everything, visa fees, everything, even if it's PK that you or mentors that you buy on the way there, Christ, all part of it. Your all in cost of going there, utilities, everything, even if it's in Ghana, you need to figure out all these costs. What is a reasonable amount that it will cost you to do this two-year, three-year, four-year program, whatever it takes, right? And then you ask yourself, then what kind of job can I get for it? Uh, I think there are certain, you may hear on the international news, especially in the US, student debt is a problem. I don't dispute that it's a problem, but I like that David said so easily, so coolly how he's, he took loans and he settled his student's debt long ago and he's fine. You understand? No one is giving him any, any pressure. I feel, and I may not have a, a full um, sense of everyone's individual unique situation, but one of the concerns with people who ended up with bad loans is, one, they didn't read all the documents to know the implications. Two, they didn't properly plan. And by properly plan, you need to think about the job you get after. Some people go and do certain liberal arts courses without a sense of what kind of job that they will be getting afterwards. So you need to make sure that the program that you are studying shouldn't disadvantage you in the job market or should be able to propel you. For example, no shade, no shade, right? But if you go and do something like English in or linguistics in school, some people will say, well, what kind of job are you going to get? But guess what? If you actually think critically, you'd realize that there are so many kind of jobs that they will equip you with skills. To um, that, um, the linguistics or the English would have equipped you with those skills to do. So, with that in mind, you know that then you are in a position to get these kind of jobs. And how much do those jobs pay? Okay, they will pay uh, maybe five thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's cool. How much is your loan payment? The school? How much is it going to cost? Eighty thousand dollars or whatever, or fifty thousand. What's the loan payment every month going to be? It's going to be five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. That's fine. So you know that you are going to be earning what um, five thousand dollars. 
you are going to be paying off let's say a thousand dollars every month in in re loan repayment over five years or ten years then you say that okay that's just going to be 20 percent of my after school income i think i'm fine i can pay 20 percent and live on the rest of the 80 80 percent you understand but if it's going to be a situation where your loan payment is thousand but the job you are going for is maybe three thousand that's or uh, one third you have to ask yourself is that reasonable because rent has to come in food has to come in transport everything is that going to be reasonable if it's reasonable cool but if you are looking at a loan payment of thousand a month with a job that is going to pay you only two thousand that's half of all your money gone and you know for example in ghana you, sh you can't take a loan that or the, the proper banks won't let you take a loan that the monthly payments would be more than 40 percent of your after-tax income so that's not even possible you see so these are some of the maths that you need to work out and you need to do proper career planning to be able to position you to take advantage of taking this loan all right so there's that then in terms of um uh, taking the loan there are, you could talk to the school in ghana i know there's snit snit offers loans for undergrad and i think even beyond uh, undergrad there are these opportunities that you can take snit talk to the schools that you are working with if it's higher education in ghana you can talk to your bank wherever you have been banking on a normal day you know and and then see if they have these loans for you if you can do it at a cheap at a low interest rate why not you know try and get a good deal on it so that it doesn't affect you too much very often and again back to the international experience very often people think about um they think about these good schools and they are like well they can't afford it so they don't apply see apply if you know you can make the cut if you know that you you get the head you know you are motivated you can do the work apply because guess what i use myself as an example i don't think i've told anyone on stage here right now but when you go to a very good school eh? when you go to a very good school the doors that will open for you we are i'm talking six figure salaries okay six figure salaries in dollars all right and i look at a scenario where i to school orientation starts tomorrow so i've been in the u.s for about two and a half weeks and at the two week mark school hadn't even started all right a week before school and I already have a job that's going to be paying very comfortable six figures. In fact, as of now, I have two of such job offers. Why? Because I went to the, I took the risk, said that HR loan is big, but when I do the math, the amount of money, that 240,000, I can pay it off in, in a few years. I know people who have paid it off in way less time because certain jobs, when you do the, when you uh, get, the when you get these jobs they, they'll give you signing bonus jack you just agree that you take this job they give you thirty thousand dollars no let us sink in you just sign on the dotted line i'll take the job thirty thousand dollars before what they'll pay you your base salary and these things you can just google it google um salaries of people with md salaries of people with msc and whatever and you abroad this information is out there so you can do your math properly Jack, it's it's see they are looking for talent, and the thing is who's around you. But when you manage to overcome that sticker shock, don't think about the cost of the school. Don't know. Don't, don't let that be your consideration. The question is, are you qualified to enter the school? If you are qualified to enter the school, a very good school, Jack, everything else will, will, will sort itself out. The funding will sort itself out. My school, for example. Once you enter Cornell, hundred and what uh, you get a loan of up about hundred and eighty one thousand. It's it's pretty much by default. No matter the amount of scholarship you got, so if money you've got fifty percent scholarship, you were you even get. It's up to you to say you don't want so much loan from them. And it's a twenty five year term, and current the interest rate fluctuates, but currently it's around six point five percent. Jack, Jack, umpe we ya umpe diye. So I strongly encourage everyone, look, if the only thing standing between you and higher education to achieve your dreams is taking a loan or is funding, let funding be the last thing. Let the, the, your main concern be, how do I get into a good school? 
whichever country it is you want, even if it's Ghana, how do you get into the top schools? How do you get into the top 10, top, uh, top 15, top 20 schools? And when you get into those schools, see, opportunities will come following you. Like, <laughs> I can't give all the details, you know, because Ghana, Ghana man, you know, on public distance, you know, you're a bit... You, you want to calm down, but I can tell you the six figures I'm seeing, Christ, it's not, it's, not, it's not small six figures I'm seeing. But it's my year. Like, it's, it's crazy money that if I had stayed in Ghana, I don't know how many years I'll, it would take me before I get there. I'm looking at salary of more than 10 times what I was earning. In fact, more than 20 times what I was earning a, a year and a half ago. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's, it, it will happen unless you take that risk. You put in a good application. You yourself, you'll be a very good person. You know to make sure that your application is very strong you can deliver and charlie the money will just follow you yeah so let, let, let me keep it brief but last last don't let money be an obstacle don't let money be an obstacle all right there's there's just one last point i would want to make but uh i just like to take a breather and let someone else insert any any other uh, suggestions perhaps thoughts on loans or funding at this point before i say one last very critical point about funding education Anyone with any thoughts or perhaps any questions on anything that someone has said, uh, you can just drop a chat in on the left side or you can send it to me personally and I'll read it out loud if, if you don't know, if you don't want people to know. And then you can you can get that, uh, you can get uh, the answers to your questions. Okay, so let me mention the last thing I want to say on, on, on this particular thing. You know, from the top, I had said that sometimes no amount of money you save will be enough for you to um, will be enough for you to be prepared for this kind of uh, expenditure some of them may be high tell even if it's twenty thousand pounds you are paying let's go that's uh, what like two hundred thousand cities jack i've never seen two hundred thousand cities in an account and i worked in the in a premier investment bank in ghana for seven years <laughs> you get what i'm saying so um the thing is even though you, it may be said that you may never be able to save enough, the thing is you still have to save. Because I take my loans, for example, it's a lot of money I'm going to get, but guess what? They're not going to pay the money into my account. They'll pay it to the school. And I should land in the US, I should land in the school, they should confirm that, oh, we're back, present, sir. Sign, then they, before they wire me some of the money every now and then. So that means who's going to pay for them? Tickets to your, um, hold on a second. Okay, yeah. So who is going to pay for your flight to wherever you have to go? You may need new clothes, even if it's in Ghana. Who is going to pay for your transportation, you know, to and from work? Who is going to pay for all those incidentals? And thing, the thing is, uh, visa fees, um, some, some of these schools even require a deposit to be paid to com commit to your um, acceptance of their offer. So some would say pay thousand dollars or thousand CDs or something. That's all money, right? That's all money that you may not have anticipated. So you need to have some money saved up. I'll say that look, if you want to pursue higher education, depending on the kind of school you want and how much uh, it will cost you, frankly, save maybe five thousand CDs if, if it's in Ghana or ten thousand CDs if it's in Ghana. See how you can manage to put something like this aside, you know, or if it's outside of Ghana, Jack. Last, last, some five thousand dollars equivalent. So maybe that's forty thousand to forty-five thousand. Try and put something down. But the worst you can do is not put anything down, because you get to the airport and then they'll say your baggage is overweight. Bring five hundred CDs. What will they do? You can't say, oh, my scholarship is abroad. When they when I go and get it, I come and give it back. No, 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 no. You need to be ready to be able to pay. All right, so you need to have some money saved aside. And I see um, Abna is draw. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the point I wanted to um, I wanted to mention to you. Have some money saved. It will help you with your miscellaneous, and um, it can keep you cushioned so that you always know you have something to fall back on. You know, like as I'm here, I still have some money in Ghana that I know last last. I can always fall back on if if you are a pie. It won't be enough, but I'll I'll fall down a little softer than hard. Okay, so I see Abna is dropping something in the chat and she said, for USA and Canada, stilt.com, that's S-T-I-L-T.com, and Prodigy Finance 
offer loans in specific institutions without co-signer or collateral. Read terms carefully before using this option. All information is available on their website. So you have those. There's also joinjuno.com. Join, Juno is J-U-N-O. So joinjuno.com. Um, some schools offer Discover, but that would come through the school. Um, something you as an individual can apply for is uh, Empower. I'm using Empower Financing. So M and Empower. So M-P-O-W-E-R financing.com that's also another option um so if you apply you can even apply for some of these loans before you even get acceptance from the schools so once you apply for the schools you are waiting to hear back from them start the loan application process you get all your documents ready you you know that so that when if, when the, the by the time things are ready uh, by the time that you hear back from the school you know that okay this is the and that's at the school i want to go to and the, by your loan has already been pre-approved. You have less of a hurdle. So first, push in your application. Let it go while you're waiting to hear back from them. You can start thinking about the funding part. But don't let funding disturb you. Don't worry at all. You will have the funding to achieve the um, education you want. More um, resources from Abna coming through. Futurefinance.com. This is for people in the UK. Futurefinance.com. And... They said, and she's also suggesting that make good use of your allocated hours as a student worker. You are allowed 20 hours per week. So maximum 20 hours per week. You can do that to get some side job to pay, to give you some money to pay some bills, you know, to keep body and soul together. So that's also a good option. So yeah, thank you all so much for uh, hearing us out. Uh, today we've been talking about funding higher education so maybe some people have come through and spoken we heard from elvis we heard from david we heard from danielle douglas also joined in on the conversation so um, in case you didn't pick up anything the replay will be available in case you are joining late replay is available for you to be able to hear of all the resources the benefits of pursuing a higher education even though the price is high you shouldn't let that uh, stop you from achieving your dreams right so um yeah if you've not followed us yet follow us on here on clubhouse follow us on twitter follow us on youtube or subscribe on youtube go on instagram facebook everywhere yeah go everywhere follow us and let's have a nice uh join us and let's have these nice conversations let's learn a lot more from each other so that we can all improve our lives and in five years to come we we'll all say that wow we are truly financially independent you know so uh he, he, about, apart from you just subscribing tell a friend just tell somebody they may just benefit from this and also when you get on instagram follow investment friend not just money convos gh but also investment friend it's geared towards helping women with personal financial coaching you know and they have very interesting content mimi and Sarah are doing amazing work there you know they make they make finance very nice and fun so get on there follow them and then share the post that they, they put up all right to my speakers Charlie any any closing remarks before we, we we close out today anyone wants to flash their mic and Mimi you've been are you available now okay Adam any last words for us on, on funding higher education yeah um I think like has been said already I think the most important thing like we, we always say in money goals is to plan ahead. Plan, plan, plan. I mean, we can't say it enough. So it's it's it has been a very, very useful discussion. And I believe that everybody has picked some nuggets out of it. So let's lay out the plans. And for me, one thing one takeaway is what you shared about the loans and the or just be audacious like they just have the audacity to do things and i'm sure greater things will follow thanks so much great thank you thank you adam for sharing that be audacious david any last words for us oh um if anything i would say that in preparing for higher education there is so much information out there. The key is to just have the time to actually sit down and look. Because if you look very well, uh, 
the resources they will break up. You know, ask people who have done it before. You know, like you right now would be a good resource if I was just getting into it. You know, and then just do your research because it's out there. There's a lots of ways to, you know, to get the money. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I like that. Do the research. Take your time and do the research. And talk to people, not just anybody, you not just my uncle said, my uncle said, my uncle said. Talk to people who have done it. All right. More recently. Are, more recently, because yeah. things change. True. You talk to somebody True. who did it 20 years ago and they will tell you, say, Massa, Ed, you don't bother. More <laughs> recently. It's very yeah. important. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Talk to people who did it more recently. Great, great, great. Um Mimi, any any thoughts to share with us before we go? Okay, I think Mimi is not back yet. So yeah, I'd just like to close it out and say, you know, same thing that Adam and David said. Don't let money stop you from achieving your goals. Education can be a good investment. All right. Yeah, we said f from the top, no, it's not for everybody, but if you strongly believe that you really need an education for what you want to achieve, don't let money stop you. Prepare a good application. Prepare so that you can get into the best of schools. And then, once you do that, the money will follow. But do your research, talk to people who have done it recently, how they are paying it off, or how family and friends can help. And, most, and also have all your documents ready. If you finished undergrad, and you haven't gone for your certificates. Me, when I finished high school, it took me 11 years. Just this year that I went for my certificate from Motown. <laughs> um, my university certificate, I think that one, I took it really quickly. Don't wait too long. Go for all those documents. If you don't know where your best certificate is, please go and find it. Because all these things are key. All right, your transcripts, download them. Because University of Ghana, their transcript system is down. So if you didn't have your transcripts, your transcript from way back, Jack, they can't print a new one for you, <laughs> you know. So get all your documents ready, all right. And most importantly, just talk to somebody. Don't just sit there and be frustrated. No, no. talk to the right people. And at money convos, you'd always have the right people. So yeah, thank you all so much for spending the time with us. Um, very soon we'll be coming up with a full proper schedule. You'll be seeing that different people will be moderating, not just me. You know, as as has been said, um. I'm in the U.S. now. My time zone is different. I'm here with David <laughs> on the same time zone. You know, I was trying to get some people to join in on this conversation, but they're all at work, you know. So um, we'll be hearing from Mimi, Adam, other people to be moderating as time goes on. So you'll be hearing more of other people's voices. But definitely go and follow us on social media. Thank you so much and enjoy your weekend as it comes. Goodbye. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our thoughts. I hope you learned a thing or two and start practicing. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Do tell a friend about Money Convos so we all become wealthy together. Talk to you soon. Bye.